The C919 has secured over 1,400 orders globally since entering commercial service in 2022, a striking number for an aircraft that Western aviation experts initially dismissed as unfeasible. For the first time in modern history, Boeing and Airbus face a genuine competitor from outside their transatlantic duopoly, one backed by the world's second-largest economy and a manufacturing base that has already reshaped dozens of global industries. The jet represents far more than commercial ambition. It signals China's determination to crack one of the last remaining technological monopolies held by the West's large commercial aircraft production. For 70 years, every major airline in the world has been forced to choose between two manufacturers, Boeing in Seattle or Airbus in Toulouse. Chinese carriers alone have spent hundreds of billions of dollars on these aircraft with no alternative. That era is ending. Washington has noticed. In recent months, the U.S. Commerce Department has begun restricting export licenses for critical aviation components destined for China's commercial aerospace sector. The target is unmistakable, the C919 program. Senior American officials have gone on record suggesting that without continued access to Western technology, China may struggle to deliver even 200 aircraft over the next decade. The implication is clear. This is an attempt to strangle the program before it matures. But the question facing analysts, airlines, and governments worldwide is whether this strategy can succeed. Can the United States effectively halt China's aviation ambitions through export controls? And more importantly, what has China been preparing for this exact scenario? Two years of operations. The C919 officially began passenger operations in the spring of 2023. Since then, the aircraft has accumulated more than 23,000 flight hours across nearly 10,000 commercial flights, transporting over 1.2 million passengers. For a newly certified aircraft entering one of the most scrutinized industries in the world, these figures represent a strong operational debut. No major safety incidents have been reported. Dispatch reliability, the percentage of flights departing on time without technical delays, has consistently exceeded industry benchmarks for new aircraft types. This operational credibility has translated into international interest. Airlines in Brunei, Indonesia, and Brazil have publicly signaled their intent to evaluate or order the C919. In April of this year, Malaysia Airlines indicated it was considering several Chinese-built aircraft, including the C919 and the future widebody C929 as part of its fleet renewal strategy. Then came a statement that reverberated across the industry. In early May, Ryanair, Europe's largest low-cost carrier and one of Boeing's most loyal customers, announced it was examining the C919 as a potential acquisition. The Irish airline made clear it would place an order if the aircraft were priced 10 to 20 percent below comparable Airbus models. This was not a symbolic gesture. Ryanair operates over 500 aircraft and orders in batches of hundreds. Its willingness to even consider a Chinese jet marked a watershed moment the C919 had entered the conversation among Europe's aviation elite. Yet despite this momentum, the C919 faces a structural obstacle that no amount of engineering excellence can immediately overcome, airworthiness certification. In the global aviation system, an airworthiness certificate is not merely a regulatory formality. It's actually the single most important commercial asset an aircraft can possess. Without it, an aircraft just, well, cannot legally operate in that country's airspace or be sold to its airlines. Each certification unlocks not just a market, but an entire ecosystem of suppliers, maintenance providers, and training facilities, an economic ripple effect worth over $20 billion per major aviation market. The certification process imposed by the European Union Aviation Safety Agency and the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration is exhaustive. It involves years of documentation review, structural testing, flight trials, and systems analysis. 
The process is designed to be neutral and safety-focused, but in practice, it's functioned as a formidable barrier to entry. For decades, only Boeing and Airbus have possessed the resources, experience, and political capital to navigate these systems successfully. Together, these two manufacturers control 98% of the global mainline aircraft market. This is not a competitive duopoly. It's a fortified oligopoly with deep ties to Western governments, defense contracts, and regulatory agencies. The idea that Europe or the United States would voluntarily certify an aircraft that directly threatens this arrangement is, at best, optimistic. For China, this represents a paradox. The C919 may be technically capable, commercially viable, and operationally proven. But without Western certification, its access to the most lucrative aviation markets remains blocked. Tensions escalated sharply in early 2025. In March, the Trump administration announced sweeping reciprocal tariffs targeting over 180 countries. China bore the brunt of this policy, facing tariff rates that peaked at 254% on certain goods. The impact on Chinese exporters was immediate and severe. Beijing's response was equally forceful. China imposed a 125% retaliatory tariff on American goods, including aircraft and aerospace components. The price of Boeing jets sold to Chinese airlines surged overnight. Deliveries slowed. Orders were quietly shelved. Boeing, which had projected China to represent a $282 billion market over the next two decades, suddenly faced the prospect of losing access entirely. A temporary truce followed. Both sides agreed to pause their most extreme tariffs for 90 days, rolling back to a baseline rate of 10%. But the ceasefire did not extend to all fronts. Almost immediately after the tariff suspension, Washington shifted its focus to a more targeted strategy, choking off the C919 supply chain. In May, the U.S. Commerce Department announced it would suspend export licenses for certain high-tech components bound for COMAC, the state-owned manufacturer of the C919. The language was bureaucratic, but the intent was surgical. The restrictions centered on one specific system, the aircraft's engines. The C919 currently relies on the Leap 1C engine, a power plant jointly developed by CFM International, a partnership between America's General Electric and France's Safran. The Leap 1C is a technological marvel. It delivers 135 kilonewtons of thrust with approximately 60% thermal efficiency. Compared to previous generation engines, it burns 15% less fuel, produces 10 decibels less noise, and emits significantly fewer pollutants. Critically, the version installed on the C919 is not simply an off-the-shelf engine. It is a fully integrated propulsion system, encompassing the engine core, nacelle, mounting pylons, exhaust components, and thrust reverser mechanisms. This integration enhances performance but creates a vulnerability. If any single component in the supply chain is blocked, the entire system is compromised. More than 30% of the parts in the Leap 1C supply chain originate in the United States. This includes advanced materials, sensor systems, and electronic controls subject to strict export regulations. Even though Safran holds production capacity in France, any attempt to supply engines to China without U.S. origin components would violate American export law. For COMAC, this means that continued access to the Leap 1C is not guaranteed. It is conditional, revocable, and politically contingent. The implications extend beyond China's domestic fleet. Airlines in Vietnam, Kazakhstan, and other nations have expressed serious interest in purchasing the C919. But if engine deliveries are disrupted, so too are aircraft deliveries. Uncertainty breeds hesitation. Potential customers begin exploring alternatives. The market window closes. Washington's calculation is straightforward. Deny China the engines, and the C919 program stalls indefinitely. What American strategists may have underestimated is just how long China has been preparing for exactly this scenario.
When COMAC launched the C919 program back in 2011, Chinese aerospace engineers were under no illusions about future vulnerabilities. They knew, you know, that dependence on Western engines was a strategic risk. So even as they integrated the Leap 1C into the C919 design, they went ahead and launched a parallel program to develop an indigenous alternative. That program became the CJ-1000A. Over the past 14 years, China has invested more than $2 billion into the development of this engine. The objective was not merely to replicate Western technology, but honestly, to exceed it. The CJ-1000A was designed to match or surpass the Leap 1C in every critical performance metric. Thrust, fuel efficiency, emissions, and operational cost. The target specifications called for a thrust output exceeding 13 tons, fuel consumption reduced by 5%, and emissions cut by 40% compared to existing engines. By 2023, the CJ-1000A completed its first high-altitude test flights aboard a Y-20 military transport aircraft. The results were, well, pretty promising. In extreme cold weather conditions, the engine's startup time was 12% faster than the Leap 1C. Fuel efficiency improved by 3%. Maintenance costs were projected to be 25% lower over the engine's operational lifespan. In May 2025, a C919 prototype, designated B002K, was fitted with CJ1000A engines and began a rigorous 500-hour flight test campaign. The aircraft performed as expected. No critical failures were recorded. The engine demonstrated stable performance across varying altitudes, speeds, and environmental conditions. The localization rate of the CJ-1000A now stands at 80%. Nearly all core components, including high-temperature alloy turbine blades, advanced ceramic composite nozzles, and full-authority digital engine controls, are manufactured domestically. Chinese metallurgists have developed proprietary alloy systems capable of withstanding temperatures exceeding 1600 degrees Celsius under sustained high-speed rotation. Thousands of embedded sensors monitor engine performance in real-time, transmitting data at rates sufficient to detect anomalies within milliseconds and adjust operating parameters dynamically. COMAC plans to begin mass production of the CJ-1000A in 2026. Initial output is projected at 50 engines per year, scaling to 200 annually by 2030. This production volume would be sufficient to support large-scale C919 deliveries without reliance on Western suppliers. The next generation. But, you know, China's ambitions extend beyond the C919. The country is simultaneously developing the CJ2000, a high-bypass turbofan engine designed for wide-body aircraft. This engine is intended to power the C929, a long-range twin-aisle jet currently in development to compete with the Boeing 787 and Airbus A350. The CJ2000 represents a leap in capability. It's designed to produce up to 35 tons of thrust, comparable to the Rolls-Royce Trent 1000 and General Electric g and engines that power Boeing's Dreamliner. Fuel efficiency is projected to be 15% better than the CJ-1000A. For a Trans-Pacific flight, this translates to roughly 20 tons less fuel consumed per trip, cutting operating costs by approximately 15%. The engine employs a 12 to 1 bypass ratio and incorporates advanced geared turbofan architecture, a design feature that enhances efficiency by decoupling fan speed from turbine speed. Among its key technological breakthroughs is directionally solidified single crystal turbine blade manufacturing, a process that reduces defect rates to below 8% while improving temperature tolerance by 200 degrees Celsius. These blades can operate reliably at temperatures approaching 1700 degrees Celsius, conditions that would cause conventional materials to degrade within hours. In March 2025, the core demonstrator engine for the CJ-2000, designated CJ-2000-101, was successfully ignited for the first time. 
During subsequent testing, the engine reached 100.6% of its designed rotational speed, exceeding performance targets. While full certification remains years away, the progress signals that China is not merely catching up, it is positioning itself to compete at the technological frontier. Breaking the Monopoly For decades, the Leap family of engines, and before them, the CFM-56 series, have dominated the narrow-body aircraft market. Airlines around the world have had no viable alternative. That monopoly is now under pressure. China's aerospace sector is not acting in isolation. The Civil Aviation Administration of China has been developing its own airworthiness certification standards, independent of FAA and ESA frameworks. While these standards are not yet widely recognized internationally, they provide a regulatory foundation for Chinese-built aircraft to operate across much of Asia, Africa, and Latin America regions that represent the fastest growing aviation markets in the world. This is not an abstract bureaucratic shift. It is the construction of a parallel aviation ecosystem, one in which Chinese manufacturers, Chinese regulators, and Chinese financial institutions operate outside the traditional Western-dominated system. If successful, it would fundamentally alter the balance of power in global aerospace. The Strategic Miscalculation The United States has attempted to contain China's technological rise across multiple industries, semiconductors, telecommunications, renewable energy, and now aviation. In each case, the strategy has been similar. Identify a critical choke point in the supply chain, impose export restrictions, and assume that China lacks the capacity to develop alternatives. In some sectors, this approach has caused delays. In others, it has accelerated Chinese efforts to achieve self-sufficiency. The C919 and its associated engine programs may represent the latter. By restricting access to the Leap 1C, Washington has effectively guaranteed that China will prioritize the CJ-1000A and CJ-2000. What might have remained a backup option has now become a strategic imperative. Chinese aerospace companies, previously content to integrate Western components where convenient, are now investing billions to eliminate every foreign dependency. The irony is that this outcome was avoidable. Had Western suppliers maintained open commercial relationships with China, Comac might have continued purchasing engines from CFM International for decades. Instead, the threat of future restrictions has forced China to build the very capabilities that the restrictions were meant to prevent. What happens next? The C919 is not yet a global competitor to Boeing and Airbus, but it is no longer dismissible. It has proven itself operationally. It has attracted international interest, and it now has a credible pathway to independence from Western suppliers. The coming years will determine whether China can scale production, achieve full airworthiness certification in key markets, and convince airlines that the C919 is not just viable, but preferable. That outcome is far from certain, but the trajectory is clear. For Boeing and Airbus, the era of uncontested dominance is over. The aviation market they have controlled for half a century is fracturing. New players are emerging, backed by governments willing to invest billions, absorb losses, and play the long game. And for Washington, the lesson may be a sobering one. Technological containment works only if the target lacks the resources, the resolve, and the timeline to respond. China has all three. The C919 is not just an aircraft, it is a signal, one that the rest of the world is beginning to hear.